Hey everyone, Lee Lowell here, smartoptionseller.com. Today's Saturday, September 3rd, 2022. We're back for another Saturday synopsis. Why are you here? Why are you watching me on a Saturday? Well, I'm here to make your life a little bit better, to make you a better trader, to let you see what I've been doing for the last 30 years and show you some of the stuff that, that helps me get into and out of trades. I'm a technical analyst, chart reader, that's what I do. So I'm here to help you look at charts, maybe in a different way, show you what I'm seeing, and just help you become a better trader in general, specifically an options trader. I get lots of questions from people that, that ask me, Lee, how do I, how do I trade options better? And, and I think one of the things that a lot of these new traders seem to forget is that options are a derivative product and their, their, their value is derived well, hence why it's called a derivative product from some other source. And that other source is the stock in which you're trading the options on. You can't just trade options in a vacuum by themselves and just think, I'm just going to buy options and sell them for a profit. Their value is based on something else. So if you're trading stock options, you need to understand what that stock is all about and, and how you think or where you think that stock's going to move to within a certain period of time. And if you have no idea you know, how to read stock charts or how to figure out which way a stock might move, then you have no business whatsoever trying to trade options, you know, call options, put options, whatever spreads, whatever you want to trade. If you have no idea what the stock's going to do, then you shouldn't be trading options because you're just going to give your money away. So the reason why I make these videos every week is to give you an idea on how to potentially read charts or, or give you an idea on you know how to look at charts and how to look at stock prices and see which way they may be headed. That way you'll have a leg up in the options market to buy or sell certain options contracts um, more profitably. So that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you become a more profitable and smarter trader, give you some education, something that some things that I've learned over the last 30 years. So that's why I'm here every Saturday trying to you know, up your knowledge game on the options trading and stock trading business. All right. So what we do is here every Saturday, we look at the charts and we look at specific individual stocks. We look at the indexes to see, you know, where this, where the market's been over the last couple of weeks or so, and where we think it might be heading. You know, there's no guarantees in, in trading, you know, nothing's a hundred percent right. And you just have to make more educated, high probability guesses on what you think the market's going to do. And one reason why I'm such a big proponent on option selling strategies is because when you sell an option, you, you give yourself a lot more room for error, a lot more room for directional error. And what do I mean by that? I mean that if you think a stock's going to go up and it, and it goes down instead, well, if you sell certain options strategies, if you, if you sell, let's say, a put option or you sell a call option, that gives you room for you know, your directional assessment. If the stock goes in the wrong way, you can still actually make money by using option selling techniques. Okay, that's something that some people don't understand because most people tend to buy options. They either buy put options or they buy call options. And the only way to make money by buying options is that the stock has to move in the certain direction in a certain amount of time in order for that option trade to be, to, to be profitable. On the flip side, option selling, if you sell a put option or, or you sell a call option, the stock doesn't always need to move in the direction that you thought it was going to move in order for that option trade to be profitable. I think that's something that a lot of people don't understand. So that's why I'm such a big proponent of option selling. And, and so before we, we get started in looking at the charts, let me just bring up my website here, smartoptionseller.com, and, and just tell you about put selling basics. Put selling basics is a strategy, selling put options, or we call it put selling, that I've been doing for basically the last 30 years. That has been my go-to. My strategies made me lots of money over the years, and that's what we do in our newsletters. We have a put selling newsletter, and we have a put selling spreads newsletter that we don't have to be right on the direction of the stock all the time in order to be profitable. And that's such a great, great way to... to you know, make money in the options market. And uh, we're not here to, to always guess where our stock's going to be at a certain time. We're here to, 
to guess pretty much where a stock's not going to be at a certain time. It's, it's a much different mindset. You know, we're trying to figure out where a stock isn't going to go versus where it is going to go. And when you, when you figure out where it's not going to go, you have a much higher probability of profit. So go to our website, put selling basics. This is the basis for our whole system. Uh, it's all about how to sell put options, put your name and email address in here and we'll send you an email. And in that email, there'll be a link to download the report that I wrote or the ebook that I wrote. Okay. So selling options is what we're all about. Let's get back to the charts here. And so it's all about chart reading this is what we call the Saturday synopsis. So every Saturday I go over some, some charts and, and try to help you understand what I'm seeing and why I would be getting into or out of trades. All right. So what you're seeing on the screen in front of you is the charts that I use. This is the SPY, uh, the exchange traded fund for the S P 500. It, it's the best barometer I believe of the overall market as a whole. And I look at a daily chart. I'm not an intraday trader. I'm not a swing trader. I'm not somebody who's in and out of the market a thousand times during the day trading one minute charts. That's just not what I do. We look at longer time frames in our newsletters. We're a couple months for each trade. It gives the market a chance or that gives the stock the chance to move in the direction that we think it's going to move. If you're trading minute by minute, the market's just too random. It's really hard to figure out how to make money on a consistent basis minute to minute. You're going to burn yourself out. It's taxing emotionally. Um, it, it's, you know, a lot of people come into this business thinking, I'm just going to make money. I'm going to, you know, buy and sell stocks and options all day long. It's a hard gig. You're going to burn yourself out. It's tiring watching charts all day long, especially one minute charts. What do I mean by one minute charts? Well, the, this is a daily chart. Each one of these lines here is, is one day's worth of trading. If you click on the one minute chart, that's the, the lowest time frame that you can look at for a stock or index. Each one of these little bars is one minute's worth of trading. Okay. So, um, this is random. You just don't know which way the market's going to go every minute of the day. So we like to take a longer time frame. This is the daily chart going back. This is two years of history just on my chart here. And so I, I try to keep it simple. The few things that I use to help me gauge, you know, where a stock might be headed is I use three moving averages. I got a 50 day, 20 day, and 200 day, all simple moving averages. Some people like to use exponential moving averages. I use simple. And down here is the RSI. It's an overbought, oversold indicator. And there's so many indicators. There's hundreds of indicators out there that you can try and tweak and use to see what will help you um, follow the price action, which way the market's headed. And over the years, I've found the three moving averages and the RSI pretty much gives me a good gauge of, of where the market's going. All right. So we look back, we draw these channels here to help us just see visually which way the market is headed. And when the market moves in another direction, we draw a channel in the other direction. And there's also, you know, head and shoulders patterns. There's, you know, uh, support and resistance. There's the W patterns. There's bull flags, bear flags, congestion patterns. There's all these things that that typically can help you find the way that stock might be headed in the future. And I'll show you some certain patterns, but, but mostly these channels help us understand which way the market is currently moving. All right. So we're looking at the SPY here and it, you know, if you've been with us for a while, you, you've known that since January, 2022, the market's just been in this downtrend middle of June. We got a little reprieve. It had this uptrend. You can see the channels that I've drawn up channel here. And now since just basically the middle of August, we've hit a brick wall uh, and the market's been selling off. Also, um, Jerome Powell, the U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman, gave a speech last week that a lot of people didn't like. He said the Fed's going to be more aggressive, keep raising interest rates to bring inflation down. Inflation's really high all around the world. And, and, and the best tool that the Fed has to combat, to combat that inflation is to raise interest rates. And that's typically not a good thing for stocks. Stock market doesn't like when interest rates go higher. Why? Because people can pull their money out of stocks and start putting their money into fixed income securities bonds, CDs, treasuries, whatever, because interest rates on those fixed income items are going higher. You get a better return on your money. Plus, it makes it harder for um, companies to borrow money. Higher interest rates means higher borrowing costs. So you get a lot of these tech companies, startup companies that need to borrow money, you know, their first few years out. And, and the higher interest rates, the more money they're going to pay on those loans. So that's another reason why stocks will go down in a higher interest rate environment. 
So right here, middle of August, we hit the 200 day moving average plus the this is the price action came upon the top edge of this uptrending channel as well hit a brick wall and started to sell off uh, last Saturday here I was hoping that the market would come down and find some support at the bottom edge of this channel here and then pop up again that obviously didn't happen we've had a, had a big flush down this week Thursday and Friday we had a little bit of a bounce and but then it came up upon the 50 day moving average right here and it got knocked down kind of closed near the low of the day yesterday so um, we don't like to see that but obviously you know the market let the market show you what it wants to do I thought last Friday or last Saturday when I made this video here's where we ended I thought we would bounce and come back up through and go higher didn't happen the market had other ideas and wants to go down so you know what we can do is you can sort of draw you know a new deep descending channel here okay that just kind of gives you a gauge of where the market's headed the other thing you can see here and I wrote about to my newsletter readers this is the SPY we had the 390 level which is right around here was a area of support and resistance to prior moves you can see right around here in this area the 390 held, held up decently came through it and then on the way up it had some resistance here as well got knocked the market back down and then probably the middle of July it blasted through came back one more time to test it and then started to go up so now on its way back down 390 could be the support area uh, for next week okay so maybe we can see a bounce here uh, at the 390 level now for some of you who are Fibonacci people uh, Fibonacci is just another way to gauge um, you know where a market might find some support and resistance you know a 50% move uh, or a 50% retracement of, of, a, of a last major move is you know also a support area now we can we can also draw some Fibonacci uh, levels here uh, where's my Fibonacci numbers here uh, so we can do a fib retracement you go from you know the recent low to the high and then you'll see where the 50 percent mark is so here is the low we pull it up to the high of this move and roughly right around there okay so Fibonacci will tell you you know where a market might retrace to so this whole move from low to high this this move right here usually on a pullback it'll 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 maybe find some support at the 50 percent retracement and then the next level is the 618 okay so the 50 percent retracement was right around 396.77 thought there could be some support there the next level is the 618 retracement the 61.8 percent retracement is right around 388 and a half or so on the SPY um, so the next level of support could be right around 388 and change we'll see I have the 390 level in here of the prior support and resistance so I think next week's gonna gonna be a, uh, you know telltale sign will it find support at either 390 or 388 roughly uh, the Fibonacci yet to be seen we have to see what plays out next week and if it does find support then maybe it'll bounce and get out of this this downtrending channel and start on its next leg higher you know as I said in the short term anything could happen we've got you know Jerome Powell's news last week the speech that he gave really kind of shook the market up a little bit he says the Fed's gonna keep raising interest rates and the market didn't like that but there's a point where the market will will find some equilibrium and say okay we know interest rates are gonna go up let's prepare for it and we can start to buy stocks again in the long run in the long run months and months years and years we know that the stock market goes up over time so you just have to be patient figure out you know when the market's gonna turn so let's get rid of the Fibonacci here and so for me next week I'm looking at you know the 390 level as possible support maybe that Fibonacci 618 uh, retracement level and then maybe a bounce but for the next for the next bulls we have to have the market move up and outside of now this new downtrending channel and hopefully bounce off 390 we'll see there's no guarantees 
Uh, so we watch and wait. You know, in our newsletters where we sell put options and sell put option cr credit spreads, those are more bullishly oriented trades. So as I've been saying, if you've been watching these videos, we've been a bit on the lighter side of taking new positions because the market is showing us it's going down. It wants to go down. And even on this up move, we took a few positions, but we have a lot of cushion for directional error. Okay. That's the great thing about selling put options is that you can give yourself lots of cushion. You know, when we sell put options, we sell out of the money strikes. Some of that might not mean anything to some of you yet, if you don't know, but you know, we sell strike prices down here, well below where the market's trading to give us more cushion forever. And we wait to see what happens. So that's the, that's the SPY, that's S and P 500, uh, looking for maybe 390 support next week. If that breaks through, then it still has some more area to fall to 360 or low 360s is the last level here. The last down move in the middle of June, that would be the next possible area of support. But I'm hoping I'm bullish for the long run. I'd like to see the market go higher, but you have to have to take what the market gives you. And it's telling you it's still still got some bears left in it. OK, so let's look at the the Nasdaq represented by the triple Q's. Same thing. We can draw the we can draw the visual. Here's your new channel. OK, you, you, you try to connect some tops, try to connect some bottoms uh, of the bars. That's how you draw a new channel. It doesn't have to be exact. Just just to give you a visual, you can see the inverted V. OK. Um, just to show you, Apple had the, this is the regular V, okay? That's called the V-shaped bounce. So the Q's has, and, and SPY as well, has the inverted V moving down, okay? So on the Q's, is there any, any support where we can see? Um, you know, it's not, you know, the 280 level could, could be some area of support possibly. Got through it a little bit here. So, but the next leg down would be shooting for this, Right around 270 is the last low, the last swing low here. And, um, you know, we'll see. But we need to see the market come up and outside of the downtrending channel before we feel better about things. Now, this was the last period where it was down in this downtrend. And then we had the up move. So it had the up channel here. So a market's going to stay in one direction until something comes along and pushes it in the other direction. Um, you know, this one. Powell scared everybody out. So that sort of helped this new channel form. What's going to be the next thing to push it higher? In the long run, companies, as long as they keep producing profitable products and having profitable quarters, every, every quarter earnings announcements comes out, as long as companies mostly beat analysts' expectations and are, are profitable in general, in the long run, those stock prices have to go higher. In these short runs, you know, the market could do anything and the market reacts to a lot of news. So you have to take what the market gives. Don't try to force your opinions on the market because you'll end up losing. You can't fight the market. Let it tell you what it wants to do. Um, let's look at the Dow Jones. Same thing. Big move down the last week and the last two weeks, roughly. So, um, you know, the markets are back in this this bear, this bear mode. And until until something comes along and says, OK, we're done. It's time to start buying, then the market will go back up. So you have to play on the defensive a little bit. If you're, if you're, you know, you're taking bullish positions, play lightly. Uh, you know, I typically like to nibble on the way down because I hold for the long run and I buy a lot of, you know, S and P, the SPY. That's my go-to. I buy shares of the SPY. I nibble on the way down, hoping and not hoping, knowing that in the long run the market will go back up again. You know. People think when the market goes down, that's the end of the world. Every company's going out of business. There's no reason to buy stocks anymore. That's not how it works. Now, if you're buying stocks that you hear on a chat room or, you know, you heard from some dubious source, a high flyer that you don't know what they do, well, you know, then there may be some trouble. But if you're sticking to quality stalwarts, high um, quality companies that have been around a long time, you know what their products are, you know what they do, you know what they sell. Those are the kind of companies that you want to get involved with. Now, if you want to get a whole smattering of all of them, that's why the SPY can be a great form of investment in the long run. And that's what I do. 
And then I look for individual stocks as well, which is what we want to do right now. Let's take a look again at Apple. You know, we look at some of the more popular stocks because that's what people like to trade. So we look at those charts here. Apple had the nice V shape bounce. Okay. And just like everything else in the last week or two, it's come back down. It, it has a new downward channel. When will the channel end? The channel ends when it ends, when the market tells you it's over. So don't try to fight the market. You know, if you if you want to buy Apple, maybe nibble on the way down, but you can wait for certain price points. Right here, this is the 50-day moving average, this line right here. And, you know, maybe Apple will find some support on the 50-day moving average. But it all depends on how the general overall market is doing as well. Individual stocks tend to fo follow the overall market because on a daily basis, there's not a lot of lot there's not a lot of news out each day for individual stocks. So they tend to follow where the indexes are going. So if the index is going down, the individual stocks will go down as well. If the indexes find some support and trade higher, then the individual stocks will trade higher as well outside of their earnings announcement um, numbers. Okay, so you know Apple's on the way down a little bit too. Maybe find some support here. Let's look at um, look look at Tesla. You know these are the these are the charts stocks that are popular and stocks that I get lots of emails about. Tesla. These are the congestion patterns that I had talked about. They start to form this this triangle like this. The ranges get tighter and tighter, and then they blast out one side or the other. Blast it out to the upside here. Now we got another congestion pattern. Came to the downside. Here's the 50 day moving average right here. So Tesla, same with Apple, maybe finding some support on the 50 day moving average. These are important numbers, the 50 day moving average, 20 day, 200 day, because everyone follows them. So things sort of become a self-fulfilling prophecy in the long run that everyone's watching the same thing. If it finds support, people think, okay, it's time to buy. And if everyone's buying at the same time, then the stocks have to go up. So these are important numbers to watch, okay? Um, so Tesla may be finding some support on the 50 day moving average here. Amazon also 50 day moving average right here. So a lot of stocks seem to be falling down to the 50 day moving average. Maybe we find some support and start the next leg higher. Um, Amazon had this nice support at a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars per share and, you know, moved up nicely. Now has a little pullback. You can see had the resistance right at the 200 day moving average just like the 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 overall market did market ebbs and flows ebbs and flows but over the long run let's look at amazon's long run chart this is a monthly chart so each line is one month's worth of trading flat for a number of years and then just rallied up but it's having a nice pullback here hundred dollar level could be the area of support you can see over the longer term there was some, you know, congestion right around the one hundred dollar level. Will that be? Will that be the ultimate support at this point? We'll we'll see. Okay, so far it's held. Um, let's look at some other stocks. Um, GlaxoSmithKline is a stock I want to show you. We've sold some put options on it, still have some cushion below. I mean, it's just been going down. But the reason why I like it here is because look how oversold it is. I got into some shares just yesterday, told my, my newsletter readers, I'm buying. I'm buying some shares down here just because it's so stretched, so oversold that a bounce is 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 really the next thing that should happen whether it's going to go all the way back up to you know the 40s that i don't know about but i do know that when it gets really stretched like this there's a bounce that's imminent now you can scalp that buy some here and then sell it if it maybe jumps a couple dollars a share and that could be your trade but do you want in a glaxo for the long run i'm bullish on healthcare. Healthcare stocks i know pharmaceutical healthcare stocks companies that have been around a long time they make lots of products and the reason why it's come off recently is because one of their their new drugs that they've been working on didn't do so well in the next phase trial but it's not their only not the only drug in their in their toolbox they have they have a ton of other drugs that they sell 
So it's not one thing's not going to bring them down. Way oversold. So I, I got in some shares here, hoping for a rebound. But we also sold some put options on it, and we still have, you know, directional. I mean, cushion for directional error. And the thing about put selling is that you can you're looking to potentially buy these stocks much cheaper than we're currently trades. Now, if we look at GlaxoSmithKline on the long run, <clears throat> it's been sort of, uh, you know, flattish. But there's a point where it won't, shouldn't be, there's a point where it shouldn't be falling below. And I'm taking a stab at that. And that's just me. But, you know, it, there's, there's risks in investing. And I'm taking a calculated risk here to buying some shares of a company that's very oversold. Um, but, but the rest of the healthcare sector, Johnson and Johnson, um, and let's look at the long run for a lot of these stocks, Johnson and Johnson going up, Merck going up, Pfizer going up. We also have another, um, play on Bristol Myers, BMY going up. That's the monthly, the daily Bristol Myers had a gap down. So we sold some put options down here, bullish trade, and the Mar and Br Bristol Myers has moved up. So our position's already making some money for us, which is good. You know, the Glaxo Smith Klein just got too oversold for me. Taking a stab, oversold on the RSI. Twenty is my level on the on the RSI oversold. It got below that, got down to seventeen and change on the level. That's pretty oversold to me. Will it bounce in the next week all the way back up to 40? Probably not, but it'll bounce a little bit. Maybe I'll take some profits and sell out. We'll see. Or maybe I want to hold for, for months and months and years and years yet to be seen. Uh, let's see what other stocks we have. Let's talk about the chip sector, AMD, NVIDIA. The chip sector has been getting hit pretty hard basically since the beginning of the year. A lot harder than I thought it would be. These companies, AMD, um, NVIDIA, Micron, they make chips for computers, which we all know computers are not going away. They're getting faster and faster. And these are the companies that are making the chips. And so it's a little surprising <clears throat> how hard they've been getting hit. Now, I, I love AMD as far as the chip sector. I like it better than Intel. I'll show you the Intel chart. But we've sold some put spreads, not naked puts, but put spreads, which are also bullish on AMD. Um, but the AMD price has just kind of gone into this waterfall which you know I don't really like, right around eighty dollars a share. Um, it was in the downtrending channel, popped out of the channel, had the congestion pattern, but broke down to the downside, along with every other stock in the market, pretty much. So uh, AMD, you know, unfortunately, it's still going down. I like to see it pop. Nvidia, same thing. It's a lot more expensive. Nvidia's got this support, you know, right in the low one thirties here. I must have drawn this. No, this line sometime in the recent past, um, you know, we want to see these stocks bounce, but you can see the downtrend that it's been in. Intel used to be the winner, not so much anymore. It's, it's lost its superiority to AMD and some of these other chip stocks, but you can see uh, Intel just been going down since, uh, you know, early 2021. Let's look at the monthly for Intel. Had been going up, you know, late teens, um, and then 2020 had a double top here, and then just been going down. But here, right on the 200, the 200 month moving average. Okay, every every chart you look at, this is the it's called the 200 period moving average, and this is the monthly chart. So it's a 200 month moving average, um, falling through support Intel on the monthly. Let's look at AMD on the monthly. AMD had been going up. Um, it looks like I had a W pattern back here at some point. Went up to 116 change, pulled back, so lost half its value. Hopefully we can find some support here. So, but, uh, you know, the chip sector, I'm, I'm bullish on. Unfortunately, it's just pulling back right now. Um, what other stocks do we have? We look at Disney. We look at name brand stalwarts. Been around a long time. Disney, Probably finding some support here. Finally, pulled back just like every other stock. Here's the 50-day down here. Hopefully, we'll find some support. But the, it, it all depends on how the general market's doing. Um, what other stocks we like to look at? Nike. 
Nike's, you know, having a rough time as well, but we know everyone knows the product. A lot of these charts look pretty ugly, you know, especially when it's coming down, get lots of fits and starts, bouncing up and down, had the uptrending channel, but now it's coming down, fell through the support right here. So Nike probably stay away from it for right now until it starts to get its mojo back. Um, what else do we like to look at? Coca-Cola, another one of my favorites. Right on the 200 day moving average here. So it's, it's fallen below it. it needs to get on its horse here and, and start to move up had this big wide congestion pattern right here popped above it a little bit but now it's popped back down below and sitting right on the 200 day support um you know if you love coca-cola for the long run you know it's not it's a great company um look at it just moves up nicely so you know if you want to take a little stab I bought some shares recently on the support of the 200 day moving average, hoping that'll hold, but you know, you can sell some put options as well down here. If you want, just gives you some cushion for directional error. If you want to hold Coke for the long run and hope to get put the shares, meaning you have to buy shares, pick a price on the chart that you'd be comfortable buying the shares. Read the put selling basics guide. Uh, it'll tell you all about it. What happens? How do you sell put options? You know, what, what's involved with selling put options? It's a great guide. And so right here, 200 day moving average for Coca-Cola. Pepsi also another stalwart moving up nicely as well. Here's the 200 day moving average right here. This long one right here coming down to the 200 day had a little pullback, but you can see bottom right bottom left to top right that's the way you want to see a chart moving okay and if you if a chart over the long run goes from bottom left to top right you know it's probably a pretty good company pepsi coke you know you can't go wrong these are great dividend paying companies as well so over the years you're going to get dividends reinvest those dividends your dividends will be even bigger you'll be able to buy even more shares reinvesting your dividends is a great way to increase your stake in a company over time without even realizing it. You look at your, your statement 10 years later, you're like, holy crap, I have all these shares of, of a great company and the dividends get larger. The more shares you own means you can buy more shares when they get, when you get that dividend, instead of taking the dividend as cash and just spending it on something, reinvest those dividends. So your, your shares get bigger and bigger over time. Okay. Um, let's see what other stocks. Kellogg and General, um, uh, we'll look at the other, other one here in a second. This is, this is Kellogg. I'm sorry. Kellogg's going, been going up nicely and it's partner in crime. General Mills been going up pretty well too. So, you know, you look at companies that provide us with the things we need on a daily basis. Kellogg's and General Mills make lots of food products. Procter & Gamble PG makes products that we use. It's been in sort of a downtrend, but over time, let's look at the P&G chart over time. Bottom left to top right. Um, we can look at Clorox cleaning products. Hasn't done that great over the last two years or so. Let's look at the long-term chart. But in the long-term, been looking good. It just covid it just came back down. Let's look at Colgate. Bottom left to top right. Colgate doing well over the long run. But you can see in the last two years, kind of sideways action. You know, you have to you have to look at the stocks and look at the, the profitability and um, hold for the long run. You know, in the long run, stocks will reward you. That's just basically the the idea of long term investing. Um, Netflix, let's look at some others. Netflix been finding some support at this level that I drew recently, probably around $225 a share, 220, somewhere in there. It still has a lot of gaps to fill, but maybe it found some support here. Um, what other stocks? Cisco recently took a play on Cisco put sell with directional cushion. Uh, had good earnings here. That's why we had the gap here. And then it pulled back. 
the post earnings announcement drip got in right around here, but it still fell with the rest of the market. You know, we make high probability trades and hope that the market goes in our favor. And when the market has other ideas, we have the cushion, we have the cushion to protect us when markets don't go our way. So that's a great thing about put selling is that you have the cushion. All right. Um, that's why we love to do it. What else do we have? Verizon. Talk about Verizon every week. Still going down. Still going down. Let's look at the long-term chart for Verizon. Got through the 200-month moving average. You know, the next line in the sand could be this, this bar right here, which would be around $37.5, $38. And then the next support, probably right around $35. How far will Verizon fall? I'm not getting in yet because the markets tell me don't get in yet. AT&T, the other big carrier, wireless carrier, still down. You know, I, I like Verizon much better than AT&T as far as an investment. AT&T pays a great dividend, but if the stock price is going down, that's going to offset the dividends. So nothing yet in the telecom sector for me. PayPal and Square we'll look at. Um, maybe starting to find a bottom here, had the big, big move down, gave up a lot of pricing. And so it's been hovering between, you know, 70 and a hundred dollars in this range here. Um, has it found a bottom? Maybe 50 day moving average here, 200 day lurking above. So it's kind of captured in this range here. So PayPal, uh, we, you know, we played it in the past but nothing for us right now. Costco, another great company. Um, McDonald's, doing well. Um, let's look at Warren Buffett. I'll show you something else you can look at as well. Warren Buffett, it's coming down since basically April. Um, had been going up since the beginning of the year where everything else was going down, but hit the wall in you know early end of March, early April, came down, had the uptrend channel, and now got hit recently like everything else. But you can't hold Warren Buffett down for long. Guy's worth a lot of money. He knows how to buy stocks properly. Uh, something a lot of people might not know, Warren Buffett also sells put options. He sells put options. If he's selling them, we should be selling them too. He's doing a lot. He's doing them on a much larger scale than we are, but he does sell put options. Let me show you something else on our website. You go to the more tab up here, click on the shop link, and we have our the report that I wrote, the secret to buying Warren Buffett for pennies on the dollar, not free, small price, but it, it entails another options trading strategy, something different than what I've been talk, talking about here, uh, a way to piggyback Warren Buffett for a lot less money out of pocket. So if you're interested, take a look at that. Back to the charts. So Warren Buffett um, getting hit just like everything else. But in the long run, if you want to follow Warren Buffett, his Berkshire Class B shares trades just like an ETF. You can buy and sell at will. Uh, you can follow him for the long run. Why not get on board? Uh, what else? Twitter, nothing happening there. Elon Musk trying to get out of the deal. We know some some bad things have been happening with Twitter. We've got whistleblowers and things happening. Facebook still stuck in the channel. Still stuck in the channel, not doing much. Uh, what else? Uh, IBM kind of range bound. You know, I want to show you stocks where where I can give you examples of you know good buying opportunities or just really seeing things on the chart that can help you say, oh yeah, I see it now. Yep. I'm staying out until the market tells me otherwise. And uh, for right now, it's either a lot of sideways action, downwards action. Um, things are reacting to the news. So being in cash is a position. Don't worry about being in cash. If the market's telling you to stay out, don't buy, or you're, you're, you're confused, you're not sure where the market's going, then you stay out. You don't have to be in the market all the time. Now, with interest rates rising, uh, banks are paying more. Not the big commercial banks. I'm talking these online banks where you can only do your transactions online. There's no physical branches to walk into. These online banks could pay a lot more interest. So banks are paying over 2% now on your on your cash in in those banks 
money market accounts, 2%. Haven't seen 2% return on your money interest in a bank in a long time. So I, I've opened up new online bank accounts to take advantage of some of that interest, those higher interest rates. And these are all FDIC insured banks. So take a look. That's one of the good things about interest rates going higher is that your cash money uh, will get paid a little bit better. So use your resources, you know, you make sure your money's working smarter for you. All right. So that's it for, for this. That's it for the synopsis for Saturday. Let's take one last look at the SPY for next week. We've got the V pattern, maybe 390 will hold here. Um, we'll have to see how the market we're, we're closed on Monday for the holiday. So Tuesday when the market opens up, we'll see if it either comes down through or maybe finds a little bounce here. Um, but we could be in this range here for a little bit in between the, the sideways channel here. But, you know, long run, I'm hoping or wanting the market to go back up. It will. You got to be patient. If you're trading day to day, minute to minute, it's a hard gig. All right. That's all for the Saturday synopsis. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I've given you some education. Please give me a thumbs up. Like this video on, on the YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, leave me a comment. I look at the comments, I respond to the comments, send me an email, I respond to the emails, I'm trying to help everyone out here become smarter and more profitable traders. All right, that's all for me. I will see everyone next week. Have a great weekend. Don't forget, got the Buckeyes tonight playing Notre Dame. Um, hoping for a good game here. All right, this is Lee Lowell signing off.